our farm is called farm, but with pH because creativity. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is our calculator. I, we chose to do um, chickens so we could have the um, offset acreage for the crop fertilizer. And then we chose to do also soy for the main um, crop. Okay, so chickens. So we chose chickens because it's very efficient in many ways to produce proteins. So first, the space it takes up is like really low compared to cows. And it's actually like, <clears throat> it's actually 10,000 chickens in one acre, which is like insane. Because cows, it takes up one acre for one cows. And then the amount of protein that it produces is very um, efficient too because it produces 1,290 kilograms per acre. Compared to cows, it only produces like 58 kilograms. One pros of chicken is that the amount of, um, uh, uh, sorry, one, cons of one con of chicken is that the amount of CO2 it produces is a little bit, actually a lot higher than cows, but we also plant trees, so yeah. <laughs> For the non-GMO soy, we had 94 acres and the cost per item was $30. So from the GMO soy, it was $50. So it was $20 cheaper to have the non-GMO soy, which is definitely a benefit. And the total cost is $2,820. And the cost, we, we can justify our choice by saying the cost per item is less than the cost per item of GM soy, or of GMO soy, so we decided to go with this one to save some money. With our decision to go to non-GMO, we felt it was best to use workers instead of mechanical harvesters. And even though workers is a bit more expensive, as the numbers there show is the 150 per worker versus 40, um, and using the 94 workers comes out to 14.1 thousand versus uh, mechanical harvesters is 3.7. With us not using cows and going with chickens and on GMO, we had some extra money saved up that we could use so we could go with our workers, which we felt was better, more natural, just felt like it was better. And also it had a lot less CO2 emissions using workers as, a, as opposed to machines. Um, we had, I'm pretty sure it was like zero emissions with workers versus a lot more if we were to go with machines. So keep it more eco-friendly, we decided workers. And then these are the choices on the farm that we made to do that. Okay. Um, so our total cost, we had $100,000 to spend. We spent $43,345.21. Um, um, our in total environmental impact for tons of CO2 was $281. Um, 0.16 and it was two the tons per person was 2.02 and I know that the average in America is around eight tons so we really kept that down as you see and then we fed 139 people um we used most of our acreage for the soy and the chickens so we could and trees so we could even that up and then um acres used per person fed was 0 0.71 um, and the cost per person was $311.84 and then to feed 7.4 billion people so a uh, world's population we would need that number <laughs> of acres which is really big and then same with America which is a lot but it's unreal kind of unrealistic to feed all those people um is it a little map did of I just we have mainly soy everywhere and then we have trees near mostly like the where the chickens overlap um, the soy so that we can reduce our carbon emissions of the chickens and then limitation slide um, we don't produce a lot of meat compared to like if you produce a cow but soy as as a plant has a lot of protein so that kind of offsets it and then um but fat um the amount of soy we use 
to produce it produces a fair amount of fat so if you can eat that then yeah and then the world we're not going to feed the entire world with our farm or the united the entire universities because there's just not enough room and then our elevator pitch. We are trying to our best to be the most environmentally cautious as possible while producing our food in a sustainable way. <laughs> but, uh, Yay. How okay. I Should I pause it? Stop recording, David. Okay, I'll stop recording. I'm recording. So um, we are Humanely Organic. Um, and we'll start with Carly talking about how we organized our farm. Okay, so we had 34 individual cows and 2000 individual chickens. And then we also had um, 30 non GM corn acres and uh, 30 non-GM soy acres and then we also had organic fertilizer and also natural pest control which like contributed to the our like um, organic plan and the total cost of everything was um, $100,000 148.88 and in the chart it just shows like um, all the people that we were able to feed with the amount of uh food that we got. Okay. Um, we kind of chose in our farm to include both cows and chickens and just a lot of like healthy organic ways of crops just to have more of like an ecosystem and more of like a healthier thing for the environment. Um, we decided to grass feed our cows with more organic methods with no hormones just to really have um, no uh, we'll have more of like a natural pest control rather than actual pesticide just to have that like kind of way of have more of like a humane experience for all our animals and just like have a more balanced farm. Um, Will, you can just kind of talk about how we decide to organize it. Yeah, so, um, so we're going to have like 40 acres of trees, as you guys can see, and then uh, 30 acres of non-GMO corn and then 30 acres of non-GMO soy. Uh, yeah, so basically we're like trying to not use too much like uh, like modified stuff because we want everything to be like natural. Okay. Um, and then you can kind of explain more like how where we're located. Um, so uh, um can you guys help me out with this one? Yeah. Oh. Um, we're located in like America and stuff because we want to like create jobs here just so it's kind of helping the environment. Um, we're going to move on to Iris. So unfortunately, our farm does come with some limitations, uh, that of which it is it, it isn't uh, it's it's it isn't very expansive and it doesn't reach many grocery stores. So we can't feed many or a lot of people. Um, it's also a little more expensive to maintain because we uh, pride ourselves on quality over quantity. And our fourth limitation is that marketing and distribution can't be as efficient, unfortunately, because our food is grown in. Okay, so our farm is the best farm we can possibly have. Um, our mission statement is that we don't have any chemicals involved in our farm in any way. Um, this creates a more humane animal life so you can feel good about what you're eating and consuming. Um, and it was briefly mentioned, but some of our core values in for Humanely Organic is creating jobs within America and in our community, as well as maintaining a humane lifestyle for our animals. Because we don't believe that we should just be raising animals to kill them. They should be able to have somewhat of a life and be animals. Um, we also chose to go with cows and chickens. So this mixture of animals creates somewhat of an ecosystem in our farm um, and creating a 
organic food, healthy food that doesn't have any GMOs. So these are some of our core values that we really pride ourselves on. As I said, quant uh, quality over quantity is what's most important to us. We have forgot to screen record this, but these are our mission statement and our core values. And I'm gonna pause the I'm going to stop the share and then I'm going to pause it. Okay. Um, so this is Friendly Farms. Um, Michael, do you want to go on to the next slide? Okay, so here are the choices on the farm. So our total cost is $99,989.69. The total environmental impact is 291.01 um, tons of CO2. We feed 158 um, total people this um, and then we have 1.84 co2 tons per person's fed and then 99.53 total acres used and this is 0 0.63 acres per person and then the total cost per person fed is six hundred and thirty two dollars and eighty five cents um, we need four four billion six hundred sixty one million seven hundred for, for, yeah, 937 um, acres to feed 7.4 billion people. And then um, we need 200,327,320 200, uh, acres to feed 318 million people. All right. All right, Chloe, if you want to present um, this. Yeah, uh, you might want to refresh it because I'm basically done with it now. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's entirely accurate, sorry, but... Um, no, it looks right. Okay, so here are our farm schematics. Each um, symbol represents something different that we have on our farm. Um, as you can see here, cows, they take up seven acres um, and they are grass fed. Same with the chickens, they take up only half an acre, but that's hard to do. So here it represents one, but not really. Um, GM corn, um, I actually messed up on the symbols, sorry, but um, they take up the most of 74 acres and the GM soy take up only 15. Uh, so those symbols should be switched. And then trees, we have three acres of those. All right, cool. Uh, so this is my slide. So we had, I just filled out the six limitations of our farm. So one is that we chose to only use grass fed and free range chickens. This limited our output because um, overall these are like the more expensive choice produce. Then uh, we also chose to use GMOs. Um, these were much more expensive, but we chose to do this because uh, they're overall more nutritious and they have less of an environmental impact. Then our farm only uses mechanical farming in efforts to reduce total expenditures. So we didn't hire any people. Um, we also avoided the use of pesticides um, and we didn't really have enough space to plant a lot of trees at the end. So that kind of didn't really help with our carbon output. And then our farm has a small amount of cows which also limits our output. All right, you can go to the next slide. Yes, yeah, so I just wrote this. So our mission statement is here at Friendly Farms, our goal has always been to provide food at a reasonable price while maintaining sustainability. All of our efforts are made to create the most food while also reducing our long-term impact on the environment. Are we at All right, yeah, and then uh, why choose us? Uh, <laughs> here at Friendly Farms, our main goal is to treat both our customers and animals with respect when treating Friendly Farms, you're supporting environments. They an organically sound company who wants to make farming friendly again. Thank you. All right, so vote for <laughs> us because we're the friendliest. Our farm is called Sunshine Farm, and it's by Julia, Emma, Cooper, and Mateo. So our farm only costs 20000 and we take up all 100 acres. The environmental impact is minimal. There's only 0 0.05 tons per person fed, and it's perfect one acre per person fed, which makes it easy to feed all Americans because you only need 318 million acres, and America consists of 2 billion acres. 
So we chose to not have any animals on our farm because it's more efficient and more ethical to use crops rather than slaughter animals. And overall, we used um, GM crops because they have engineered to be more efficient and better for the environment overall. And we use pesticides because it is important to protect our crops since they're our only source of food on our farm. And we overall had a minimal CO2 impact on the environment because we don't have any animals. <laughs> So for the farm schematics, um, you'll notice that half of the farm is trees, a sixth of the farm is um, GM soy, and a third of it is GM corn. And the reason that we have half of the farm being trees is to reduce the environmental impact because they'll take in a lot of the carbon dioxide and so they'll make it a lot more environmentally friendly. Uh, limitations, no animals. Having no animals on the farm is a limitation because there's no, uh, there's not a lot of biodiversity. Therefore, if something happens to the crops, the whole farm would collapse as it does not produce any other food. Uh, second limitation is GM, GM feeds. The food is not being grown organically, which may be an ethical issue for some people and influence them not to purchase it. Third limitation is conventional pesticides. The pesticides used are not organic, which can be an issue for nature and Organism, organisms if they are not uh, thoroughly tested. And action. So our farm is called uh, Gent Nico Farms by uh, Nico, Triana, and Jake. Oh, okay. Choices. So, um, we have 25 grass-fed cows, and we decided to incorporate cows into um, some of the, the food that we offer because they're in such high demand and people really want them. Um, we also want them to be healthy, so that's why they're all grass-fed, uh, rather than crappy stuff like corn. Uh, we also have 45 chickens, um, and these are given like plenty of space to roam because we also, we want the animals to have a, a better quality of life um, than on some of the other farms. Uh, they're all grass fed, obviously. Again, want them treated well. In addition, um, we're not having any growth hormones. We're not, we're not giving them any of the cows because it's, it's just unnatural and it, it's unhealthy for the cows. All right, so this is like our statistics for our choices. Um, we used, um, a total of like, we, we had $84,000 total that we used and we used all of our acres. Um, our impact is pretty high, so um, that's something to note, but we do feed a lot of people with our, a couple, like a few hundred people with our uh, um, farm. Um, we also use just less of an acre for each person, which is good. Um, and then our limitations were, um, because our environmental impact is so high, we wish we could have more space to like get trees and all of that stuff. We also would have liked a greater variety of crops because it's just corn and soy isn't very interesting. Like I'd much rather have like tomatoes and a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, so I think it's kind of, we also have like a really high cost for feeding a person per person to feed um but i think we want to keep our grass-fed animals which is a little bit might be a little bit more expensive so i think it's a sacrifice we're willing to take <laughs> so our elevator pitch is we take care of our animals which are all grass-fed and we let them run rampant through the farm so what this basically means is that we take really good care of our animals instead of like keeping them in enclosed cages and pumping them full of hormones and mass producing them. We try to like give them like as good as as good a life as they can have until it comes, you know, time to like slaughter them and feed them to people. Cause we think it's important that we keep, um, you know, these animals, in as natural a habitat as we can like make for them. So, and we just let them run rampant through the farm, which basically means 
they, they're not trapped in boxes or cages. They can just kind of roam around and chill out for the majority of their life. Okay. <laughs> okay. Our farm is called The Best Farm, and it's by Sydney, Chloe, Solana, and Niraj. Um, wait, it's like not letting, oh, okay. Um, okay, our farm feeds a total of 26 people, and we use 3.87 acres per person fed. Our total cost is about 68,000, which is well under our budget. However, our intent was to create a community-based, sustainable, and environmentally friendly farm which is why we feed a low amount of people and maintain an environmental impact in the negatives. Okay, so for our cows, we have about 30 cows on our farm and 15 are grass fed. And this will, um, this kind of lowers the environmental impact and makes it cheaper. And also 20 cows are given growth hormones to kind of provide um, a more easier production considering we have such a limited amount of cows on our farm. For chickens, we have 600, 400 are free range and 200 are conventional. The reason we have uh, twice as many free range is because although they are more expensive, we wanted a better lifestyle for the chickens. We wanted diversity so they were able to like walk around and be more free. And for corn, we have four acres of genetically modified corn and three acres of non-genetically modified. The reason we have more acres of genetically modified is because it's better for the environment. For trees, we use 71 acres of trees out of our 100, and we know this is a lot of acres of trees, but we again wanted to lower um, our environmental impact because we felt like that was the most important part of our farm. Um, our first limitation is that we can't feed a huge population uh, with the current resources that we have. Our second limitation is trying to maintain low environmental impact while staying under 100 acres of land. While we were able to keep the costs pretty low, just making sure that we were also simultaneously reducing our environmental impact was quite difficult. And our third limitation is that um, cows themselves had a huge environmental impact. So we had to consider a bunch of other alternative methods that you know relied on less cows and and other resources instead to provide results. Overall, our group is focusing mainly on producing the best kind of food with the least amount of environmental impact. We are not focused on feeding a huge population of people, but we want our farm to stay local and feed families around our community. Overall, helping um, having a lower in environmental impact and giving our community the freshest food as possible.